Oh, well, well the gardens was uh, exceptional. It was my home ring for 20 years. And with my Marley years and my leaf years, I didn't play anywhere else. That was my home arena. So it was very special to me. Here's sort of my story. Um, I was playing my minor hockey in, in Ottawa. And at the age of uh, 14, I was approached by a Maple Leaf scout in Ottawa. And uh, he wanted to talk to my parents who happened to be at the game. Yeah. And a week later, Punch Emlac and King Clancy flew into Ottawa, talked to my parents and was agreed I would come to Toronto the following year and play for the Toronto Marlboro B team. And, uh, and at that time, if, you're, if you have a dream to become a professional hockey player, that was the big step. That was a big step to actually join the Marlies. So I was considered an import at that time and uh, played for the Weston Dukes, which was the Toronto Marley B team in that first year. The next year I made the A team and played three years on the A team. Um, the year we won the Memorial Cup, uh, I was called up for a game to play with the Leafs one game uh, while I was a Marley. So uh, we won the Cup, the Marlies uh, won the Memorial Cup 63-64, and I turned pro with the Leafs the next year, 64-65. Well, that particular year, um, we had been out of the OHL for a couple of years. Harold Ballard decided to pull the Marlies out of the OHL. And so for a couple of years, we played in what we call the, uh, uh, what was it called now? My goodness, sorry the name, but it was a, they called the Metro. I believe it was Metro. And uh, so the Leafs owned every player in the league and there were five teams all within the Toronto area and they owned every player. And then in, when in the year we won the Memorial Cup, we went back into the OHL. And so we had a pretty strong team because it was basically made up of the, those other teams when we went back in. We only lost eight games the whole year. It was an unbelievable team. And uh, so that was unique in itself. So we uh, get started on that season back into the OHL. Jim Gregory, who is now a vice president of the NHL, was our coach that year. And uh, he did a great job because we, were, we, were, we had a talented team. I think, if I'm not mistaken, 12 players off on that team turned pro. I mean, it was one of the best known clubs of all time. Uh, the Canadians would, uh, the Montreal Canadian junior team might argue with it, but a lot of people say our team was probably one of the best of all time. Uh, anyway, I get uh, placed on a line with Pete Stamkowski and Wayne Carlton. Wayne turned pro with the Leafs. Peter did as well. And we, being, we, uh, we had a good line. We, we uh, all scored over 40 goals that year. I was fortunate enough to lead the team in goals. And that was a big step for me. Um, Another thing that happened that year, I was always a centerman my whole career, all minor hockey, junior B, year of junior B, two years of junior A, I was a centerman. So Jim Gregory came to me very early in that season, it was actually during training camp, I guess. And he basically said, Ron, I'd really like you to consider moving to the right wing. And I, I said, Jim, I, I, I'm a centerman, I'm not a right winger. And he said, uh, Oh, would you please listen to me? And I said, yeah. The Leafs had just won two cups in a row and they were about to win their third. That year we won the Memorial Cup. The Leafs won their third in a row in the early 60s. He says, Ron, uh, who, who were the centermen on the Leafs? Well, they said, there's Davey Keon, there's Red Kelly, there's Bobby Pulford, and there's Billy Harris Sr. Yeah. You think you're gonna break into that group? And I said, well, 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 he said, there's going to be a spot on the right side next year because they traded Mob Nemen, 
who was a right winger. They traded him to New York. So that was my, that was it. I moved to right wing, had my best year ever. And, and that allowed me to turn pro the next year. Peter Stomkowski was also a centerman. Great player, but there was no room for him on the Leafs. He had to play in the minors for two years before he could get called up. So I, it was a big break for me. It was, it was the break of my career. We had to uh, play two or three rounds of the drive recall. Um, I think it was, he did just, he, yeah, it was the Montreal Junior Canadians in the finals for the East. Um, and uh, they had Ivan Cornoye on that team and Serge Savard. I mean, they, they had a pretty good team too, uh, but we were so strong. I think we won four in a row. And then we ended up playing the Oilers from the West and beat them four in a row at the gardens. At the gardens, yeah. It, it was a magic year, as I said, uh, with our line having so much success and the team only losing eight games. We, you know, we, we were the powerhouse of the league. And uh, Jim Gregory, as we look back on it now, it, we almost, when I meet Jim, well, he's a very good friend. And um, we talk about it, right? And basically his job was to keep us motivated because we were that good, but we, we didn't know how good we were. We were just young guys having fun, you know, playing and hoping this would be the stepping stone to an NHL career. And we're all there for the same reason. Once you're playing junior A, your, your goal is to play pro. And so Jim's job became mainly keeping us motivated um, so we didn't, you know, get, get too big headed. And so he kept pounding us and, uh, making, and kept us working hard. We had a goal and, but, uh, he didn't really have to do much coaching. That's how good the team was. We had Mike Walton on that team. Uh, Rod Sealing, Gary Smith played goal. And <clears throat> there were others, uh, Barry Watson, uh, Britt Selby won the Calder with the Leafs the following year after I turned pro. We had an unbelievable team and uh, uh, it, it was just a joy to be part of that group. And we actually we had our, our anniversary uh, a couple of years ago and quite a few of the boys were able to come into Toronto. We had a lovely time. Um, they took, took us uh, to, to the Rico Center where the, the present day Marlies who are in the AHL play and uh, we had a great time. They introduced us all, and um, it was just great to get back with the guys. Some of the fellows I hadn't seen for 50 years. Well, when, when you win something like that, uh, yes, it does create a bond. And uh, the Leafs as a whole, uh, if you're a Leaf, you're, you're part of something pretty special. But the other thing that was, uh, was the positive for me is many of the Leafs at the time that year we won the Memorial Cup, many of the Leafs were former Marlies. Bobby Bond, Bob Pulford, George Armstrong. Uh, you could go down the list, Bob Nevin. And uh, a number of the guys were from St. Mike's. That's Davey Keon, Frank Mahomlich, Red Kelly. They played in St. Mike's, you see. Um, so when I moved from the Marlies, when I was fortunate enough to make the team, there were a lot of ex Marleys on the team. And again, that bond was there. You know, once you're a Marley, that's a bond within itself. And so that was a real plus for me. It wasn't the same uh, after expansion and after the draft came in. Uh, as I said, some of the Marleys who won the Memorial Cup in 75, they'd get drafted to New York and there were no ex Marleys on that team. So it wasn't, wasn't the same. Oh, well, well, the Gardens was uh, exceptional. It was my home ring for 20 years. And with my Marley years and my Leaf years, I didn't play anywhere else. That was my home arena. So it was very special to me. Um, and when they closed it, of course, I was thrilled that they were going to keep building in, intact and keep the name on the front and all of that. That was, that, that was quite meaningful for me, but I, I'll just go back a little bit. Um, after 
after uh, Mr. Imlach and Mr. Clancy came to my home when I was 14, um, <clears throat> before the end of that season, they invited my parents and I to come to a game at, at the gardens. And I, I was just blown away. And, and I'd never been in the gardens prior to that time. And we had seats right on the glass. And, um, you know, it was just, you see it on TV, but when you, back then when you see it live, the colors and, and uh, the big dome, it white dome in the gardens, uh, it really had, an, really had an impact on me. And uh, so I certainly was aware of the history of the gardens and certainly wanted to be part of that. And I was very fortunate to play my whole career in Toronto and got over a thousand games with the Leafs. And we won a Stanley Cup there. I mean, in the gardens, we won our Memorial Cup in the gardens. So I couldn't have asked for a better story. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the Memorial Cup is one of the hardest trophies to win. Sometimes you only get one chance, you see. Um, uh, the Stanley Cup team that I was on with the Leafs was my third year, so you get another chance. But the Memorial Cup, a lot of guys only play junior for one or two years, so it's a very difficult trophy to win. So yeah, it's uh, you're you're in a special group when you get your name on the on, on on the Memorial Cup. That's that's for sure, and so it meant a lot. And as I said, the success of our team uh, that year, winning the Memorial Cup. Um, and the success of the line that I played on, um, that was the reason I got the opportunity to turn pro. The other thing, you can, um, just a reminder to people, prior to expansion, which happened after the cup win in 67, that was the year the six new teams came in and the draft was put in place. Prior to that, you could play junior hockey, junior A hockey, and still be qualified to take a scholarship in the States, a hockey scholarship. I was protecting myself, and a lot of us were. Um, prior to that final year, Memorial Cup year, uh, I had been talking to universities in the States and uh, they were prepared to give me a full ride. So that was important to me because uh, I worked hard at my schooling as I, and I wanted to have a backup. There were only six teams in the NHM. So you had to be, the timing had to be right. Every, a lot of things had to go right bef to make it possible to play in the NHL. I just explained my why I, I was successful, the move to the right wing was the key to, key to my making the NHL. Um, if I hadn't made the NHL that year, I probably would have gone back to school. I don't think I would have played in the minors. I, I, wasn't, uh, I, uh, I wasn't interested in playing in the minors. And the team that owns me, there's only four. Really three, he used to play with three lines back then, not four. But uh, they, had, they had four guys that, uh, at that time, Billy Harris uh, Sr. was, probably didn't get the ice done that the other guys did. Uh, but he, when, whenever somebody got hurt, he'd fit in so well. He was, that, he was one of those players that could come in halfway through a game and just play beautifully, where I couldn't do that. I had to start the game. I couldn't come in halfway through but he, he had that ability, and uh, so he was a great guy to have, have as well, to have on the team if Dave, Dave Keon got hurt or whatever, uh, which that didn't happen very often. <laughs> <laughs> Why watch the Memorial Cup? I do. The Memorial Cup's on display at the Hall of Fame where I work, so I walk by there, and uh, up in my office, my, I have an office right here in this building, and in my office I have uh, a trophy that's given to the most valuable player uh, on each year on the Marlies, and Pete Stomkowski and I were co-MVPs that year. I have that trophy in my office upstairs. So it means a lot. It means a lot. It's just, it's part of the journey, and it was a very important part of the journey for me.